Okay, uh, let's look at the uh, practice exam two, problem number 12, all right? So uh, we are looking for the uh, characteristic frequency and the modes of uh, vibration for the system uh, below here, right? So 4K, 2K, K with uh, two masses with uh, uh, mass M on each, all right? So what we want to do is first, uh, we want to find the um, uh, spring potential, right? So V. So spring potential can be found by one half uh, spring constant time displacement squared, right? So since you have, we have two masses, uh, we have to uh, uh, have uh, two displacements. So we're going to look at, uh, we're going to call the displacement of the first mass, uh, say X, right? and the displacement on the second mass, we'll call it y, all right? Then uh, we try to find the spring potential of this whole system, all right? So v is going to be equal to, all right? So we look at the spring potential of this spring, so it's going to be 1 half, Right, spring potential is 4K on that guy, so it's a 4K. Right, displacement here is since uh, just the same as X, so it's going to be just uh, X squared. Right, if you look at the second uh, spring, uh, spring potential of the second spring would be one half. Right, it's uh, 2K is the spring potential. Then displacement of the second spring would be the difference between the displacement on yeah uh, of these uh, two masses. So it's going to be uh, simply x minus y squared, right? And the third one is easy enough. It's just going to be one half spring constant is k, and the displacement is y. So it's going to be just a y squared, right? So this is the spring potential of the whole thing. So let's uh, uh, simplify it a little bit, all right? Uh, I would probably factor out uh, all the k's and the one half. So I'm gonna uh, factor out the k over two, all right? Then uh, what you get is going to be, right, from here, k is factor out, the uh, over two is factor out. So it's gonna be four x squared. So you have four, x squared, right? And the k is factored out, the over two is factored out, so it's two times uh, x minus y squared. So uh, that will be x squared, but there's a two here, so that's gonna be two x squared, right? Then minus two xy, but there's a two, so minus four xy, all right? And a, a plus y squared, but today is two, so it's gonna be positive, uh, two y squared, right? And from the last term, k is factored out, over two is factored out, so you're just gonna get uh, y squared. So you have plus uh, y squared, right? Then just uh, put them uh, uh, all uh, together, so just to clean it up a little bit, so it's going to be uh, k over two. All right, so put these guys together. So you will have uh, six x squared minus four xy. Then you have plus three uh, y squared, All right? So uh, let's look at the force on uh, each mass and uh, see what happens. So uh, here's the force. All right. So since uh, we are looking at the um, uh, characteristic frequency, so we we may we can assume that uh, you know these two guys have the exactly the same frequency. So we're gonna write as uh, so I'm gonna say uh, let all right, uh, x to b, right? So this is just going back and forth. So convenient notation would be uh, using the exponential function. So x zero is just a magnitude, right? Then you have uh, e to the 
I W T. All right? Then uh, if you do that, um, you can take the derivative uh, twice. Uh, if you take the derivative twice, all right, so because we need the acceleration for the force, all right, right here. All right, if you take the second derivative, first derivative, you're going to have a chain rule, so it's going to be I W is com uh, com comes out. And second derivative, you have a, another I W, so it's going to be I squared would be negative. And you have a W times W, so W squared. Then you will have x, x zero e to the i uh, w t power, so it's going to be just the original function x, All right? And uh, you can do the same thing with y, All right? So uh, maybe, maybe I'll write it this way. Uh, let's see. All right. So we can let uh, x to be uh, this, and also uh, y to be. So y is going to have exactly magnitude might be different or altitude it might be different but um, the frequency w is the same right so same way if you take the derivative of y uh, uh, with respect to time twice you end up getting negative w squared y all right so uh, let's look at the force. Um, so force is going to be mass times acceleration. So mass times the second derivative. So it's going to be, uh, so for the first mass, it's going to be negative, right? Mass times the acceleration is negative uh, W squared X, right? So that's the force. So all I did was uh, mass times acceleration. And this is gonna be equal to all right so it looks like uh, this is the same thing as negative of the partial derivative of the uh, spring potential with respect to x so we're going to take the partial derivative of this guy with respect to x all right so k over 2 is just the uh, constant so put it here all right so partial derivative of 6x squared would be 12x all right and a partial derivative of negative 4xy with respect to x would be negative 4y. Right? Partial derivative of 3y squared would be 0 because it's written in terms of y. Right? So we have that. Right? Then we can simplify it. So this is going to be, um, oh sorry, I forgot to put the negative sign here. So it's kind of actually negative. So it's going to be negative k. Right? So I'm going to distribute one half to each one. So you will get um, 6x minus 2y. All right. Then let's look at the second mass. Do the same thing. Uh, so it's going to be negative um, m omega w squared. Uh, in this case, uh, y. All right. So just uh, m times acceleration. All right, then we take the partial derivative of the um, uh, spring potential with respect to y, since this the disp displacement is y, All right? So we have a negative k over 2, All right? Partial derivative of 6x squared with respect to y is 0, All right? Partial derivative of negative 4xy with respect to y would be negative 4x. Right, partial derivative of 3y squared with respect to y is positive 6y. Right, so distribute the one half, uh, you will get uh, negative k times uh, divide by 2, so it's going to be negative 2x, and then you have plus 3y. Right, so we have that. All right. Then uh, I'm going to just uh, divide through by uh, negative k, because negative k is here, so you're going to get this, right? So uh, combining these two, I'm going to write it in uh, matrix notation. So I'm going to just uh, divide through by negative k, right? So if you divide this guy, negative um, uh, mw squared by negative k, so negative k cancel out, so you end up getting m w squared over k. All right? 
Then uh, you have x and y, so it's the same thing here. So I'm going to write it as uh, x and y as a uh, matrix, x, y, right? And that this is equal to, right? So a negative k is gone, right? Look at this matrix. So this is just a linear, um, you know, uh, combination. So you have a 6, negative 2, negative 2, 3. So we can write it as a matrix, right? Uh, 6, negative 2, negative 2, and a 3 times the uh, uh, variable matrix, which is um, has uh, x and y in it, right? All right, so, so all we did was just to rewrote this guy in a matrix notation. Then notice that, that this, this guy right here, since um, x, y is going to be the eigenvector because you multiply uh, this matrix, uh, sorry, this vector by this matrix, you end up getting a constant multiple of the original vector. So this is the eigenvector, eigenvalue. So eigenvalue is mw squared over k. All right, so let's uh, find the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of, uh, of this matrix right here. All right, so we know how to find it, right? So it's a um, uh, determinant, All right? So you have uh, 6 minus right, omega, I mean the, uh, lambda, I meant. Uh, so it's negative 2 and a negative 2 and a 3 minus lambda, right? So the determinant is going to be this times that. So you get uh, lambda squared uh, minus, uh, let's see, 9 lambda, right? So it's going to be uh, plus 3 times 6 is going to be plus 18, but minus 4, so plus uh, 14, right? So which can be um, factored out as lambda minus 2 times quantity lambda minus 7 right so set that equal to 0 so we we have uh, two lambdas okay so lambda equals from here 2 and 7 All right so let's find the um, um, characteristic frequency but the lambda value is given so if uh, lambda is equal to 2, right? Then uh, you will get this. Um, so you will get, all right, so uh, mw squared over k has to be equal to 2, right? So you can simply uh, solve this guy for w. You end up getting, all right, so it's going to be a 2k over m then we have to take the square root. So you have a, a square root of a 2k over m, right? So this is the uh, one of the characteristic uh, frequencies, right? And uh, characteristic mode of vibration is going to be, it's uh, basically the um, finding the eigenvalue, but, uh, right, so plugging 2 uh, into, uh, into the matrix here, so it's going to be 6 minus 2, so that will be 4, right, so 4x, right, so minus 2y, so minus 2y, right, you can just look at the first equation because the second one gives you the same thing. So is equal to uh, zero, right? So uh, this guy actually gives you. Um, so I'm gonna solve for y. So y is equal to two x, right? So this describes the uh, mode of uh, vibration, freak, um, uh, characteristic mode of vibration. Uh, it's just saying that uh, so uh, the displacement is going to be in the same direction because it's uh, both positive and there's no negative sign. But the magnitude of y, so this displacement is twice as big as the displacement of this guy. All right. So uh, I'm going to give a little bit of room here. So I'm going to just move it a little bit. All right. So uh, you would have um, uh, other... Um, eigenvalue, which is um, lambda equals 7, right, then we can do the same thing. So if lambda equals 7, 
then we know that the mw squared over k is equal to 7, right? So this will give you uh, w uh, is equal to, so characteristic frequency would be, it's going to be just a 7k over m, right? So this is the other uh, characteristic frequency. And the other characteristic mode of, uh, mode of vibration would be, right, so we plug in 7 here, so 6 minus 7 would be negative 1, so it's going to be negative, negative x, right, minus 2y is equal to 0, right, so this means that, um, let's see, uh, x is going to be equal to uh, negative 2y. Right, so this is this describes the uh, mode of uh, vibration. Right, because of the negative sign, the displacement is going to be the opposite direction, but the uh, magnitude of uh, this guy is going to be twice as big as the, the displacement y. So this guy moves a lot more, so then I mean, twice as much as uh, the second mass. Right. So that would be the uh, the other uh, mode of uh, vibration, All right? So uh, this is how you do um, uh, problem number twelve. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.